What's on today's menu? Peg Leg Porker Tennessee Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This was just rated the number one bourbon in the world. And why not have it with some beautiful smoked beef ribs and some smoked Brussels sprouts with some onions. You guys are in for a treat today. We're going over this beautiful bourbon which was rated number one in the world in the Philippines, baby. Here we go. <laughs> wow! Before we get this episode started, I wanted to give a special thanks to the big time from Myrtle Beach to Orlando, Florida. Check out his YouTube channel. He is an amazing gentleman. I met him in person, and I had the pleasure to speak with him a little bit. He even plugged my channel into one of his videos. So, if you have a chance to take a look, this gentleman has been going throughout all of Universal Studios, filming all the resorts and filming all the stuff that Universal Studios has to offer. Go check him out. Give him some support. Like and subscribe to him. Big time. Thank you so much for your support to me. I greatly appreciate everything. Forget about it. This is going to be Peg Leg Bourbon. It is going to have a 45% APV. And the mash bill is going to be 84% corn, 8% rye, and 8% barley. This bottle was only about $45.00 over at ABC Liquors in Claremont. I went over there and I spoke with uh, some of the team over there and they just got this in. Apparently this just won bourbon, best bourbon in the world in the Philippines. I had a little trouble trying to find that, but this particular bourbon, they have this basic bottle here, which is aged about four to six years. They have an eight year, and uh, also a 15 year. Um, but this particular bourbon, I'm going to review with you because I'm very excited about this. I've never seen it before and I've never had a chance to taste it. Uh, the distiller uh, is Pitmaster Kerry Bringle. He came up with this because he really appreciates how well bourbon and barbecue go together so well. This bourbon has won a whole bunch of awards. And I had to actually write down some notes here on all the awards that it was actually awarded. In 2023, uh, it was awarded the world's best bourbon at the Singapore World Spirits Competition. The white label, which is this bourbon, and also the eight year received a double gold standards award in 2024 in San Francisco for World Spirits in the World Spirits competition. It also received the gold honor at the 2024 Ascot Awards and received a double gold honor and Consumer's Choice Award in 2024 SIP Awards. I can't wait to just go over this because I don't think I've ever had a bourbon like this before in my life. We will go over some of the tasting notes, what I pick up on the nose, on the palate, and on the finish. I'm really excited to review this. If you have had this bourbon, let me know in the comments what you think. Don't be a stranger. You know, give me your feedback. Give me your input. Did you or do you think that this bourbon deserves all these notorious awards, all these honors. I'm really excited to be able to hear that from you guys. Without any further ado, I'm going to crack this open for you. But as I do this, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I've been doing this for a little while and all of your subscriptions help. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, the best part of it is, is you're supporting the little guy. I do this as a hobby. I have a full-time job, but I absolutely love doing this with all my heart. So, without any further ado, look at that beautiful pot. 
We'll pour this in. Now, it's not as dark as some of my other bottles here. Look at the old Forrester single barrel, uh, you know, barrel strength here. It's a lot darker in color, but this is only, you know, aged four to six years. And also, don't forget, I just released a short on the details of my bottle meet, my bottle share meet and greet. So don't be hesitant, come by, Let's tell some beautiful stories about our bourbon hunting journeys and some of the gems we were able to get in our journeys. And remember, bourbon is not meant to be hoarded. It's meant to be shared amongst friends and family, heck, even lovers. You don't know who your good friends are until they start sharing a good bourbon with you. All those good stories come out. It's what makes us who we are. And uh, sometimes these stories are stories that we remember for our whole life. Hopefully we can create some amazing stories when you come over to the Bottle Share event over here. And I really look forward to seeing you all over here at the Bottle Share event. Now this juice is sourced from Dickel. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna see a little similarity here with the Dickel products. Um, but this Pitmaster is the first Pitmaster in America to start his own brand of bourbon whiskey. A little fun fact there. America's huge on barbecuing and smoking of meats. So I think it's about time he finally had a pit master break out with his own brand of bourbon whiskey. Um, what we're gonna do here is just go over some stuff. I actually poured this in two separate glasses. One is a rocks glass and the other is a Glencairn. Um, I have a feeling I'll pick up different notes on the nose from either or, but uh, let's give this a try here. Let's see how this actually smells on the nose. Um, right off the bat, I'm, I'm not even, my nose is even near the glass and I'm already smelling caramel coming from the bourbon. I, I smell a lot of plum and cherry notes, dark cherry notes coming from it. Beautiful vanilla. A little bit of woodiness coming from it. And I'm definitely getting some caramel. I'm definitely getting caramel. Oh, that's delicious. I'm even picking up a little bit of plum notes. Let's see if I get anything different from a rocks glass. Let me know in the comments. When you pour your bourbon into a rocks glass or in a Glencairn, do you notice the bourbon's opening up differently? Do you notice that if it's given a little more air, it breathes a little better and then you pick up different notes? Well, let's find out for myself here. It definitely opens up a little bit. Um, that dark cherry note is definitely a little more predominant. And it's not in the Glencairn. Oh man, you see right now I got the smoker going as you saw in the beginning. And I'm actually smoking with oak wood right now. And this actually has uh, oak in there. Um, it is filtered though. So let's see what the result is of this award-winning bourbon. Ooh. On the tongue, you have those plum cherry notes come right out. Um, definitely tasting a little oakiness coming from it and some caramel coming in there. On the finish, the oak tannins are definitely coming out. And on the finish, you know, I'm definitely picking up some of those Dickel traits coming from it. You can tell that this is sourced from Dickel. And I'll tell you this, it is as smooth as a rock. I mean, it goes down super easy. Like I said, the APV is only 45%, so that's 90 proof. 
and it is delicious. Very smooth, very easy going, and is an absolute pleasure to be able to have. Now let's see what it's like here in the Glencarran. Now I pick up on my nose a lot more of the fruit notes in the Glencarran, but I also pick up a lot more ethanol in the Glencarran glass. Whereas the rocks glass, um, I'm not picking up a lot of that ethanol coming up out of the glass. And it probably has a lot to do with how big the glass is. The Glencarran, it kind of, you know, goes a little smaller towards the uh, base or the rim of the glass. Oh man, such a beautiful aroma. Oh, I could smell this for days. I'm even kind of picking up a little bit of hickory in there. But remember, this is filtered a couple times. So since it's filtered, a lot of stuff is kind of removed. Um, I have a bottle of JD Gold over here, and that's filtered from a maple barrel. And it, since it's filtered, it removes all the Jack Daniels classic taste. You know, all the Jack Daniels products, even the single malt I have over here, has that signature JD taste, and I know you guys all know what I'm talking about. But when you filter it, sometimes you remove some of those classic characteristics of the bourbon. I think you guys are going to be really impressed with this. Um, it doesn't need ice or nothing. I mean... This is just a nice warm-up. If you're about to have a little bit of George T. Stag or some Cowboy Hazmat, this would be a great bourbon for you to actually warm up your palate to. And it is something that I am really excited to be able to have with the barbecue that I'm smoking right now. I think this would really complement any type of barbecue that you're going to where there's smoking meats or smoking fish. This is a nice nice pleasant surprise. I want to thank James over at the ABC Liquors in Claremont for turning me on to this. He specifically pointed this bottle out to me before it even hit the shelf. So James, thank you for everything and you always help me out over there James. You're an amazing person. I'm actually very very uh, happy to have met you over there along with your team. The team at these ABC liquor stores is a they're phenomenal teams extremely knowledgeable on the products they sell and they're also um, always ready to jump out and help you with whatever you need over there. Thanks for tuning in to the Exotic Bourbon Hunter. Go score yourself some peg leg bourbon. You will not be disappointed. Forget about it. Bada bing bada boom. Hey yo!